Hey, this is Dave from the Adobe Character Animator team, and welcome to the July episode of Tips and Tricks. This month, we're going to start off with a script that a user wrote that allows you to take your lip sync Vizim mouth data from Character Animator and have it show up as individual mouth shapes in After Effects. Pretty cool and useful script. We'll also do a little spotlight of our own. Last month we were featured on uh, Mad Money as part of uh, Jim Cramer's program and uh, he animated in a version of himself and performed with that on his show. So we'll take a quote, closer look into that. Um, and then we'll finish up with a bunch of quick tips and tricks, how to make your arm layers move in front and behind uh, your head and your body, as well as the secret key that no one knows about, the semicolon key. So we'll go into more detail about that. So pretty quick episode, but let's get started. So we've heard the request before from a lot of people, hey, I wish I could bring more data from Character Animator into After Effects. Um, being able to see more, you know, see keyframes, see visualizations, see things that I can attach nulls to or other things if I'm a more advanced After Effects user. Uh, so this is something that could potentially happen in the future, but uh, this guy, Lars Jandl, just got tired of waiting and said, hey, I'm going to do it myself, so why not? Um, so this is available for anyone to download. It's a name your price download, whatever you want. Um, and he has a ton of demo files and uh, a tutorial video to go through um, on his site. And it's a very cool script and, and uh, workflow. So here I'll show what it does. In, in Character Animator right now, I've got this uh, demo file that he set up. And as I'm talking, you're noticing it's showing the different lip sync mouths, but it's also blinking between which mouth is being triggered. Um, so those are the audio ones. It also does the webcam one. So if I smile, or show surprise face, or do a custom keyboard triggered one by Z, does this kind of kiss face, then all those are showing up in this file. And you'll notice as uh, he's got a recording here um, that shows all the visims down here in the timeline. Now the cool thing is if you follow his instructions through the video tutorial and website and all that, then if you bring this into After Effects, and now this shows up uh, with little bars, little mini blocks uh, for each mouse shape in the timeline in After Effects, which is just really cool to see that data. So you can attach other things or whatever other thing, you know, with the full power of After Effects here. And you've got full control over things. So if I say, oh, I want this to be a little later, um, you have the ability to do that. So uh, very cool, just a great way to get more data from your initial character animator puppet into an After Effects composition. Um, so definitely check this out. If you're working with After Effects and Lip Sync, uh, this is definitely something you should download and give a whirl. Uh, very cool work, Lars. Thanks for sharing. So you've probably all seen this type of video before, an explainer video. These are videos where they take a complicated topic. So in this case, something like how currency is made in the United States and why there's a national debt and other financial type things, and then break them down into smaller pieces with a lot of you know, motion graphics and animation and things happening like that, including in this case, a uh, little owl named the Fiscal Owl, who's kind of serving as a narrator, taking you through the entire uh, video. And this is the work of animator Ryan Hanbaum, and uh, he used character animator to create four different puppets and spread them out over 40 different scenes and composited the whole thing together in After Effects. So this is a great example of using Character Animator um, as a part of the workflow for this type of explainer style video. And you know, did this video have to have animated characters? No, it didn't. But I think it works a lot better and feels stronger because of that. This guide, this owl, kind of is your anchor, your foundation, your narrator throughout the entire journey. And uh, you know, you can't. He's a cute little guy. I mean, you you, you can't help but want to you know watch what happens to him and what he's doing and you know all these situations that he gets put in in the video. So I think it's really successful, and I love seeing this sort of thing, and particularly character animator being brought into uh, you know a pre-existing workflow. These types of videos have existed for a long time, um, but you know just adding it into the mix, and uh, I think it's a, a better video for it. So great work, Ryan. Another month, another mind-blowing example from the guys at Digital Puppets in the UK. Um, and in this case, uh, they are, they've created a system to control two characters with one person and only have one talking at a time. So here I've got Bookie the Worm. Hey man, how's it going? How are you doing, Wizzy? Oh, you know, I'm, I'm doing all right, Bookie. Bookie, how are you doing? Uh, you, you know, I've been better, I've been better, but I'm all right. So 
this little back and forth. Now, now they're both talking at the same time because I'm not pressing the keyboard trigger to switch between the two. But it's just a fun little system that you can play around with. So um, as I move my head, you'll notice they're kind of doing the inverse, the mirror of each other. Um, and Wizzy has a little bit more movement to him. Bookie is a little bit more um, constrained. But the way that they set this up is, let's go to rig mode. So we've got our top level puppet, dual puppet, and it's got a group with the two characters in it, Wizzy and Bookie. And the only difference between these two guys is Bookie, in his layer properties, his X scale has been changed to negative 100. So because of that, he's basically been, been reversed and flipped around, and that's why any motions that I do, he's going to do the opposite, the mirror image of it, um, which gives a little bit more variety to the two characters at the same time so they don't look like they're uh, moving in the same direction every time. And then uh, he, they've set up key triggers for these guys. So in the mouth group, um, for, for Bookie, if I expand this a little bit, um, you'll see his neutral mouth has an E key trigger. And so uh, because both of them are in this one puppet, uh, I can control all their key triggers um, at the same time. And so when I press E, I'm going to show uh, Bookie's mouth, his neutral mouth, and allow just Wizzy to be the one speaking. And I believe if I press R, that shows Wizzy's uh, smile and will only allow Bookie to speak. So as I was talking, I was switching between the R and the E keys to determine which character I wanted to have talking at any given time. So it's a nice little, you know, hacky technique to get this two character setup working um, pretty nicely. And so this is a, a great way if you want to do multiple characters and think you can handle doing uh, multiple voices and have them talking back and forth from each other in a live environment, um, this might be a great way to do it. Look Studios has also helped with a few more game streaming puppets for people. Uh, the first one here is Nibbles uh, the Bunny. He's a pretty awesome little guy who loves carrots and plays video games. And they've got a ton of little uh, surprise triggers for him, making him happy, sad, have carrots show up, uh, all sorts of different things. A really cute character. So that's Nibbles, and he's on uh, Mixer. And then this is Kazler, and Kazler is a little animated dog character and has a nice command center there and everything. And uh, this guy has a, a pretty complex rig going on with an Elgato stream deck and foot pedals and key triggers, and the dog does a fidget spinner and some other stuff. And uh, he's got an in-depth video um, on his site, and he does Twitch streaming as well. So um, just two really cool examples of people uh, doing more great video game streaming and Look Studios, again, uh, creating some really expressive fun characters. So this is a fun project to be a part of. This is uh, Jim Cramer from the Mad Money uh, TV show. And recently, uh, he sat down and was interviewing Shantanu Narayan, Adobe's CEO. And as part of that interview, they actually had Jim Cramer use this and perform with this animated version of himself live on set. And he loved it. He was having a great time and, uh, you know, just amazed that, you know, his performance could immediately be captured in this, anima this more animated version uh, of himself. So the goal with this character was try to make it as easy as possible to control, right? So, for example, if I press the one key here, um, it latches and it does five different things. It's doing two eyebrows, two eyelids, and the arm going up as a, I think, three or four frame animation. Um, so just one, and then two does the point and the squint, and then I believe five makes him get angry and throw his arms up in the air. And then, of course, you've got to have him change into a bear, or a bull for the different uh, stock market outlooks. But anyway, um, oh, I think his eyes turned to uh, dollar signs as well. Um, so it was just a fun uh, little thing we threw out there and uh, seemed to go over really, really well. Um, and so it's always cool. You know, there's always so much joy when someone sees Character Animator for the first time, and particularly if they see an animated version of themselves that they can control. Um, that's just a really cool uh, moment. And so it was an awesome uh, experience to work with these guys, and we hope to do more uh, stuff like this in the future. A very common question in the comments and forums is, I've got an arm that I can drag around for my character, and it shows up in front of my character's head, but what if I want it to show up behind the character's head? Or vice versa, it's showing up behind the character's head, how do I get it to move up front? Well, there is a way, and it's through key triggers and a little bit of setup in the rig uh, mode. So let's go there. So here's my test puppet, and inside him is an independent group with a bunch of stuff and rigging on top of it. So we've got the fixed stick down here to stick him to the ground, a draggable handle so I can drag his arm, two sticks to show where his uh, form and his bicep are, 
And look inside, nothing else is independent. And this is because we want everything to kind of bend and move as the same mesh. So you see this big yellow line that's going through that's connecting everything together? That means everything is on the same mesh. So everything is gonna move and bend together. If I changed one of these, like the head, to independent, then notice the yellow line changes and only the head is going to be moving by itself. But in this case, I want everything to move as one connected system. And then you'll notice I've got arm front here, arm back all the way in the back, and then head and body are sandwiched between the two. And it's a very simple substitution system. So arm front uh, starts out as rectangle, uh, just the, the regular artwork being shown up. So by default, arm front is what's going to show up because by default, arm back is showing a blank layer. But when I press the one key, rectangle two is going to show up, this one that's behind the head and body, and instead, arm front is going to change to a blank layer so you won't see it anymore. So that's all there is to it. You're creating a system, uh, a single character, where you can swap these different arm positions on and off. So by default, remember the rectangle was showing up in front of the character and the back one was a blank layer. But when I press one, the back uh, shows up and the front one turns invisible. And I can trigger that as many times as I want to move back and forth. So that's a simple way to create an arm system that allows you to have both front and back states. All right, I'm gonna let you in on a secret here. This is a key uh, that probably only five people in the world know even exists and have used it before. Um, and that is the semicolon key. So if you press semicolon as you're uh, recording or streaming, then your character is going to pause their head and their eyes. So notice as I'm moving around my head here, the character is stuck in a position. That's because I'm holding down the semicolon key. But then when I let go, he's going to move to uh, the next position where, I, where I've moved to. So what this allows you to do is kind of create a way to move from one post to the next and kind of have a character stick in a position before moving to the next one. This is a really common thing in animation, a pose to pose workflow. And generally you don't see characters always moving around and going nuts all the time. They're moving from one pose to the next, doing this and that, and this allows you to do that sort of thing. So uh, semicolon, I'm paused here, I move over here, he moves over there, I pause again, I talk a little more about something, and then I move over here, I press pause again, and he's paused. So anytime you hold down that semicolon, the character is going to pause. Now, one important thing to notice, under smoothing, under eye gaze and face, you probably wanna set that to a higher value, something like 90%. If you don't, if it's low, then when you let go of uh, the, uh, the semicolon, he's going to just jump really quickly and it's not gonna be a smooth transition between the two states. Um, so, secret key, no one else knows about it, but now I've told you and you can uh, experiment with it. I wanna explain quickly the difference between setting behavior parameters in rig mode versus setting them in record or stream mode. I'll show you what I mean. So, you know, I'm here in stream mode and if I go to head tilt strength down here under face and I drag this up to something like 137, well then the tilt is much more affected by how I'm moving my head. I have to do just subtle movements to really get a head tilt. And you'll notice this little X shows up. And if I click the X, that changes back to 25%. Well, why is that 25%? Why isn't that zero? Why isn't that 100? Why, where is this all set? So if you go into rig mode, and so I've got my face behavior and alt parameters down here, and notice that head tilt strength is indeed set to 25%. But if I drag this and change it, notice that I'm not getting that little X to reset it back to its original position. And that's because in rig mode, uh, you're just setting default values. That's all you're doing. And so if I adjust a bunch of these, let's say to you know different values, and then add this puppet to a new scene, doing this, now notice how my face parameters look. They have all those values that I set in rig mode as the defaults. And of course I can adjust them here, and uh, if I press the X, I'll go back to the original default position. So that's how parameters work. If you're in rig mode, you're just setting the defaults for the character. And if you're in record or stream mode, uh, you're adjusting on top of those defaults and making edits, and you always have the option to reset back to the default value. All right, that's it for this month's episode. Thank you very much for watching. And I wanted to make a note, if you're going to be at San Diego Comic-Con, that's July 20th through 23rd at the San Diego Convention Center, please stop at the Adobe booth because 
I'll be there, some other people from the team will be there, we'll be demoing character animator, we'll be doing some uh, panels and speaking events, and we'll be giving out Red Monster socks. I haven't seen them yet, but apparently they're pretty cool, and we'll be giving them to some people, so please stop by and say hi. Uh, other than that, if you have any questions, concerns, issues, bug reports, feature requests, all that stuff, the best place to do that is on the official character animator forums at adobe.com. But that's it for this month, so thanks again for watching, and have fun.